Good morning. You excited being guys? How so what? Amen? If you can't get excited about worshiping the Lord, ain't nothing else worth getting excited about. I mean, we got to get in practice for eternal life, gang. Absolutely. Ooh, I forgot to take my keys off. I got remember I got to empty everything out of my pockets and stuff. It's kind of like a security blanket in reverse. But anyway, this morning we want to welcome you to Southside Baptist Church. We love you very much. We thank you for coming out. Uh, looks like the pandemic is kind of waning away. Praise the Lord for that. God, you know we made it, gang. We're the ones. You know, so praise the Lord for the ones who are here. Uh, you know the ones that have have gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, that was all in God's stead. He, he, he was not handling all that. We can grieve them, but remember, we can always go to them. Amen? Through Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So let's be happy today. All kinds of things going on outside out there. The world is in turmoil upside down. Our country is in But that's okay. We still serve a living Lord Amen. that has promised us a mansion in heaven. Amen? Amen. We're excited this morning. This morning, uh, a couple of our announcements that we have. I already lost the bulletin that I had. I can't find it. Anyway, uh, we're going this year again in April. We're going to be doing our fiesta at Old Southside Baptist Church again. It'll be out in the parking lot. It'll be uh, uh, in the evening, on a Sunday evening. And I guarantee you, you will not want to miss that. It is really great. You can invite anybody you want. It's really a lot of fun out there. Uh, we're having a lot of exciting things uh, Come along. We're having Easter coming along here pretty quick. We're worshiping our Lord. Sister Betsy's going to start teaching a Bible lesson on Easter. Three weeks prior to that on Wednesday, she'll be teaching us on Wednesday nights. A lot of neat things going on, okay? So uh, this morning we're going to be, though, in some most exciting scripture. Is that strong enough for this guy? We're going to be in the book. Of, now, remember last week we were in the very first book of the Bible. Now, let's go into the first book of the New Testament. Matthew. If, any, if some of y'all had no idea what I was fixing to say, Matthew, then you better start looking at the Bible a little bit, okay? Matthew's the first book of the New Testament. We're going to be in chapter 11. That don't mean you need to go out and file for that this week. No, chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Verse 28 through 30. My yoke is easy. But first... Now, you know every once in a while, I will make a referral to the peanut gallery. The, uh, in other words, quiet in the peanut gallery. Do you realize that that's an, I, I decided to do my butt first on it this morning. You say? It's an expression we remember as kids. I remember a lot when I was a kid, okay? Uh, when you giggled or laughed too loud during a lecture at school or, or at a movie or, or, or something like that, uh, they would say, quiet in the peanut gallery. Well, where did that come from? What does it really mean? It originated in vaudeville theaters in the early 1900s. The peanut gallery was a another name for the cheap seats. Either the very front row where nobody wanted because that was the spitting section, you know, or the very back row. Those were the cheapest seats in the house. And so that's the, the, the people would sit in there, and they began, they, they began to be known as the hecklers. Uh, <laughs> uh, and they would heckle the performers and jeer at them with verbal, not just verbal comments. They would buy... In the lobby, they would buy shelled peanuts. And when they, when they didn't like it, or they would toss peanuts at the actors. Now, this is not for any ideas. No, it's just... <laughs> As using them, and they would pelt the actors with their projectile of, of peanuts. Now, I said all, this, all that to say this. If, I, if you, we ever see Sister Emma Parker... Standing at the door handing peanuts out. I'm going to let Brother Thomas preach that day. Okay, all right. <laughs> yes. So now you know the rest of the story on that. Okay. The thought for today is this. You know the word easy appears only once in the New Testament? And then it's connected with a yoke. Interesting. 
Christ, yoke, and burden. Let's now look at, let's stand as we look at chapter 11 of the book of Matthew. These are some very interesting, very, very neat words in red letters. And Jesus is saying here, come unto me. Now, does he say come unto anybody? anybody? He says come unto me. That's Jesus himself. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I, Jesus Christ, will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father God, we just come to you this morning, dear Lord. These are your words. These are words that you've, that you've breathed into the world that are into the gospel. So that we can, dear Lord, connect with them and say, this is my Lord talking to me now. And so how, do I, how should I follow my Lord in this today? Lord, first of all, we want to praise your name today, Lord. We want to praise you above all names of this earth. You're the only hope we have. And so we're here to praise you in a hallelujah service today, dear Lord. May we be lifted up to praise your holy name for dying on the cross for our sins, for rising on the third day to giving us eternal life. Lord, we, we we're here, dear Lord, if we need to be in a repentant spirit today, if there's something I did this, like, this last week that, that, that brought disrespect to you, or your name, I repent of that right now, dear Lord. I want to turn from that and not repeat that again in action or in deed or in words. But now we, we want to ask you, dear Lord, for the healing of our nation, the healing of our world. We pray, to Lord, to Lord, is a day of prayer, dear Lord, for the Ukraine. We pray for those poor people over there, dear Lord, that are being so horribly murdered and oppressed. We pray for the oppressed in all over the world, dear Lord. But right now, let's pray, dear Lord, that every soul here will be turned to Jesus right now, just for a few minutes to listen to your word so that we can have a little bit closer relationship. Feel just a little bit better when we walk out than when we walked in. And dear Lord, and help us to yield to your will. Things aren't always going to get better, dear Lord, here on earth. But oh, there's a promise that we're heading for that it's going to be perfect. And we're excited about that. Thank you, Jesus, for saving our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We are called to follow Jesus Christ as our only Lord and Savior. I want to let you know today that all of us, all of us, are yoked to whatever is most important to you at the moment. You're yoked to that. Because we will... We will go in whatever direction where that person or desire leads us because we're yoked to it. I'm going to get a little bit deeper here in a minute on this. Thus we are yoked to them or it. I chose this scripture today because this is kind of interesting. Uh, Sister Judy and I... Uh, we're rearranging our kitchen. We've got some different furniture, and we're moving things out and moving. So one, one cabinet's going to be a little higher than the other one we had in there. So I had to remove some stuff off the wall. Man, that woman's always changing things, sister. Anyway, okay. Right. I, I love it, honey. It's beautiful. Thank you for allowing me to do that. Anyway, uh, and so we're, <laughs> we were rearranging some things on there. Peanut gallery, watch out. Okay, of, of the, of, on, off the wall. So one thing we were taking off was... We have a yoke on our wall, a, a, a real yoke, okay? And I'm going to show you that yoke. This is up in the wall of our kitchen at our home. Well, it's not there right now, but anyway. So I'm going to set that right there today. This is a, this is a, this is, if you'll look at it, it was actually honed out with an axe because you can see little chop marks all on there. And that's an actual yoke, one for the lead and one for the follower right here, okay? Because they, they would always take an animal, they take the strongest one and yoke it to the weaker one so they, they would teach it to pull for the younger ones, okay? So there's always one in charge of this yoke. So think about that as we're going today. So, but we found this yoke right here, just like it is, in Branson, Missouri. We were on a trip up there one year, and uh, 
We happen to go in. We were looking at Dick's Five and Dime right there on the main. If you're ever in Branson, you got to go to the, that's the old wind store that's still original. It's amazing. So we were in Dick's Five. We came out, and Judy said, well, let's go down this way. We went down that way, and we saw this antique shop. But then she looked down, and she said, Albert, there's a door. There's steps going down to a basement. And it says, welcome. So we went down there, and this, this thing was four times the size of this sanctuary of a basement under this building full of antiques. We were in heaven. We love that kind of stuff, okay? So we looked around. All of a sudden, Judy says, Albert, come here. She says, look at that. And this thing was up on a wall. She says, we got to have that. And if Sister Judy says, we got to have that, that means we're going to have that. So we purchased that, just like it is. Ain't changed nothing. Only one thing we changed. Judy says, okay, there's an art shop that we had already went over and had some things done. Right across the street, they'll etch things in, in, in wood. And she said, let's go across over there, Albert. She said, I've got, to, I've got to have this. I've got to put this on there. And she had that, my yoke is easy, Matthew 1130. That's what it says on that little thing right there. That's in our living room. I mean, that's going to be in our kitchen area. As soon as we finish rearranging, let's take it back up. But anyway, so... I removed it off the wall. When I, as I was removing it off the wall, I told Judy, as I was taking it down, I says, honey, I know what I'm preaching on Sunday. God will send us messages in different ways. Sometimes it's rearranging a kitchen area. And Matthew 11.30 says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So think, get a picture of this yoke as we go today and think about that. This is you over here. Who are you yoked to? Or what are you yoked to? Because whoever has control over here is going to lead this one where it, wherever it wants to go. Think about that. If you'll notice right off here, the scripture that our Lord Jesus Christ does lay a yoke and a burden on his followers. Because you're, you're, pulling, the same, you're, pulling, you're pulling together. Okay, We're pulling through this life together if we're yoked to Jesus Christ. I believe he uses these words so that no one can presume to enter his service, service of Jesus Christ, without proper consideration. You've got, you've got to realize what you're getting into. Christianity is not a question for petty thoughts or part-time commitments. The service of the meek, so I am meek and lowly. So the service of the meek and lowly Christ is Absolutely not child's play. There's a yoke that is, that is to be worn by all of Jesus' disciples. And if you're a disciple, all disciple means is you're a disciplined believer. To be a disciplined believer, get under his yoke with him. Stop following your yoke of, God, of stuff in the world that's leading you in a different direction from Jesus Christ. You must be aware, though, that you realize, though, to get yourself in that yoke. So say it's right here. Guess what I have to do? I have to bend over and humble myself to get under that yoke. And that's exactly what you have to do. You've got to get rid of your old selfish pride, your old deeds, your all your old. Yourself is not yourself anymore. Yourself now belongs to the one who's teaching you how to pull belongs to Jesus Christ. Too many of us will say, All right, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, but I want the yoke to go my direction. I want my thing. I want my ideas to be under that yoke. I, oh, I love you, Lord. I may even come to church and say, Hallelujah. I'll go to church and, and twice a year and say, Yes, I'm a real worshiper. Jesus says, That ain't my yoke. You're being pulled in the wrong direction. You listen to the world. You want to serve me? Serve me. As for me and my house, we will serve who? The Lord. So, mark my word this morning, there is a burden to be carried for Christ. There is. If you've lived for Jesus Christ, you know you're pulling, it's a burden out there. It's difficult. It's not easy. And all my strength that God gives us must be used for what? For His honor. I, I am here under that yoke to honor the one that's, uh, that's pulling me on this side. So whatever is under here controls here. 
if it's anger, if it's hate, if it's immorality, if it's greed, if it's cheating, if it's lying, if it's being a sluggard at work, that's what's pulling you along in life. Jesus ain't there. You're being pulled by the wrong one. When Jesus pulls you, you're going to make the right decisions. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to give up all that garbage in your life. You're going to start following Jesus Christ. Oh, we make mistakes. I understand that. But too many people are, blame, are using that mistake clause for the cause they live by every day of their life. Watch out for the intentional sins. Don't let this word yoke and burden sound too harsh to your ears today. And if any of us should, should back off because we have at one time or another shouldered, yeah, you know, uh, it, we, it was the, the yoke was maybe an irritation. It's kind of hard for me. I don't know. Man, i got to go to church today. It's Sunday. i got so many things I want to do other than that. Satan will give you all kinds of things to do. And there's a whole bunch of them out there today doing it. I believe my Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, but do so much the more as so many are. They're forsaking it all day long. They'll get these toys and things, and guess what? Pretty soon they're under the yoke of their toys. Now, nothing wrong with vacations. Nothing wrong with nothing wrong. But when you make your life a permanent vacation, and God is secondary, who's pulling your yoke? Who's on the other side of your yoke? Please remember that the master very graciously and sweetly says this. There's a very key words here. My yoke is easy. He didn't say your yoke, Albert. He says my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It appears to me that he said this so that no one will lose hope. I'm having a hard time here, but guess what? You told me you're, you told me as long as I stay under your yoke, you're going to make it. I, I can make it, Lord. I may even have pain, but I can make it because I'm under your yoke. You're teaching me how to deal in that pain because maybe I can be a blessing to somebody else down the line that's in the same kind of pain. But if I'm a crybaby about it, how am I ever going to teach them to yoke up to Jesus Christ and be strong in it and make it through that and be a witness through that if I can't even handle it myself? Whose yoke you under? That we may not become dejected and lose confidence. Sometimes Satan tells us that, you know, you're not really saved. You just think you are. You're not really going to go to heaven. Like he told Jesus, turn, that, turn those rocks into bread. Man shall not live by bread alone. But every word that appears that comes out of the house of who? Out of the mouth of God. Christ has the yoke for us to wear. So let us wear it. Not only joyously, but let us be serious about it. If you're going to be serious about Jesus, well, then stay under his yoke. Stop letting the world's yoke pull you away all the time with our lifestyles and our habits in this horribly sinful, liberal world we live in today. And the closer you get to him in fellowship, you'll find that yoke becomes easier and easier to bear. So let's wear it, hopefully. Let's wear it with joy. Let's wear it with confidence. Jesus has a burden for everyone who's to carry for him. So let's be sincere when we bear it. Don't give up. He's, he's in the yoke with you. He's right there with you. But remember, when you put your trust in your life in Jesus, your burden becomes lighter and lighter. And lighter. Talk about that a little bit. So we as believers should be full of joy and very at the very prospect of being honored to be yoked up with Jesus Christ. Who helps you with your decisions? Who helps you pull along in life? It's got to be Jesus, gang. Our Savior, his objectives are always clear. They're especially clear here. It didn't say Albert's yoke is easy. It didn't say your name it, yoke is easy. It says my yoke is easy. You got to be under my yoke for things to get easy. You got you to start thinking my way. It doesn't mean you're not still going to be sick. It doesn't mean you might still have some problems. It doesn't mind you're, you're going to lose some loved ones. It's going to happen. 
But get under my yoke and I'll help you deal with all that. As one of mine. And light, I mean, burden is light. It means light in the most glorious terms. It gets lighter and lighter. You can always be sure that when you're in the yoke with Jesus Christ, your burden's going to be lighter. Because he's pulling the weight, gang. See, that's why I have to humble myself to get under his yoke. I hope you'll not pervert this verse as some people do. They misquote it by saying the yoke of Christianity is easy. The burden of Christianity is light. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. I'm not greatly concerned about the yoke of Christianity. I want to be right today. I want to be under the yoke of Jesus Christ. Because Christianity is just going to be, sometimes it's just religion. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. This is not some unclear, visionary, imaginary thing. But the very Lord himself that bought us with his precious blood is speaking with his lips, which are sweet-smelling savor to God. He is, he is pointing with his, with his pierced hands to the yoke and the burden which he calls his own. Get under my yoke with me. Stop following the world. And say we're not supposed to still live in the world. Don't mean you have to quit your job. But just take Jesus' yoke with you to the job. Oh, there's so much bad there. Who cares? Man, I, I was among, my job, I, everybody I worked with was out cussing this people I ever knew in my life. That didn't mean I had to cuss with them. And do you know, after a while, after a couple of years, I never put them down. Oh, you're going to have a hell of a night if you say that again. No. I just loved them. And then guess what? They didn't hear it out of me anymore. Because see, Jesus' yoke says, don't do that, Albert. Your foul language is gone. You don't need that trash to serve me. You're not going to serve me with trash mouth. So, you're either going to have trash mouth yoke, or you're going to have Jesus yoke. And so God took that out of my heart. And you know, pretty soon, by the time I was, uh, you know, I had 25 years on a police bar, you know, they would, they just absolutely stopped the dirty jokes around me. I didn't ask them to, and they stopped the cuss words. They would, they honored, not, they honored who I stood for. Who I stood for. And that doesn't mean I'm great. I was nothing, but you know something? I was under Jesus' yoke. And I never put them down. I just loved them and cared for them. I was very nice. They never heard anything come out of this trap that was offensive to God. Be careful whose yoke you're under. Because he says, my. And it didn't, it didn't say the world's. It didn't say your, 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 your figment of your imagination. It says, my. You have to, it has to be Jesus' yoke. For all, to even... First of all, they even qualify. They even qualify to get under the yoke. Did I say qualify, sister? Yes, I did. Yes. You have to be what the Bible specifically says. You must be a born-again believer. Amen? Amen? Peanut gallery needs some help on that one. Okay, okay. Because without Jesus being your Lord of all, He's going to be Lord not at all. Without trusting Him as your personal, you've got to take Jesus personal, Lord and Savior, and turning your body, your soul over to Him. Then you're nothing but a worldling. And I'm not putting you down. I'm just telling you the truth. You're living for the world. You can't think in the same way Christians think. You get, you, you, your mo when you look at scriptures, it doesn't give you the same message because you, you haven't sold your soul out to the Lord. Have you ever looked at a scripture? Now that you're saved, you say, whoa, that's great. I never realized that. This is, and take it personal. Judy and I were doing a, she, she me a devotion this past week. You may have gotten that one too. It says that God's very DNA, his very DNA is in his word. This is God breathed. So when you look at this, this is God talking to you. It's his DNA. Wow, isn't that cool? 
He said, be careful because you're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Lovers of the world than lovers of Jesus Christ. Some are self-righteous and proud of the very thing or things that, that should make you ashamed of yourself that you're doing, how you're acting, how you're living. So if you're not a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ, our verses are, have nothing to do for you. We can't help you. To be under the yoke of Christ, you got to be, first you've got to be a believer. Then you'll want to stoop down. You'll want to humble yourself in front of the Lord and get under His yoke. You can care, take care of that this morning. Today. Before you go home. You can go home a different person. Hallelujah. I remember that service when I accepted the Lord. When I walked out of that door, I was a different person. Not perfect. I'll never be perfect. You'll never be perfect until you get to heaven. You'll never be. But you can serve a perfect Lord who will lead you to a better way of life. You can go home a different person today than when you walk through that door this morning. And you know something? We, are, we here at Southside Baptist Church are not beyond asking or begging you to say yes to Jesus Christ today. Begging you. Because I guarantee you, this side of the river is so good. The fishing's better over here than you ever dreamed in your life. We ask you and beg you to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And to prove it to you, John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said to Nick at night, Nicodemus, Verily, verily. In other words, pay attention here, dude. I say unto you. Now, put your name right there. I say unto Albert. Except a man, except the person be born again, cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you're born again. That's scripture, gang. That's Jesus, red letter stuff. So you can't get around it and say, well, my church don't believe in that. Your church is wrong if they don't believe in being born again. Amen? Because that's scripture. God breathed scripture. Is that strong enough? Pretty good. Okay, yeah. And I might add, this letters are read in this verse. So what out churches preach it today? And the Bible further informs us the lost person without Jesus Christ cannot possibly be yoked to our Lord. Romans 8, 7 says this. Because the carnal mind, the carnal mind, the worldly thinking mind without Jesus, that's exactly what carnal means here. Because there's no such thing ever. I said this many years ago in a sermon. There's no such thing as a carnal Christian. You're either a carnal or you're a Christian. Oh, they just kind of backslid. No, they're backslidden a little bit. A carnal person, it says, because the carnal mind is enmity or hatred against God. That's what carnal means. So uh, I cannot hate and love God through Christianity at the same time. I cannot be a carnal Christian. That's a misnomer. That's a lie. In the, towards God. For it is not subject to the law of God. See, a lost person is not subject to God's word. You're not subject to understand God's word. You're not subject to want to live for the Lord. Neither indeed can be. You can't get under the yoke until you know the one who's on the other side. Amen? Whoa, well, Pete. Now, that's a mouthful. Thank you, Brother Paul, for the book of Romans. The book of Romans is an amazing book. Because all God's word is wonderful. God will not be served by people whose sins have not been washed away by the precious blood of his dear son, Jesus Christ. So to even qualify for getting under the same yoke with Christ, you must know Him as Lord and Savior. Now, Psalms 34, 8 says this. Oh, this is great. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Does that, does that, does that not bless your heart right there? Oh, Lord, I taste you in my heart. I can taste the goodness of serving you. I love to be on your side. Lord. Thank you. Blessed is the man, blessed is the woman that trusteth in him. This is our test. Come and prove it for yourself. Now, there's never been a case 
in which a person has really taken Christ's yoke upon themselves, where they have, by that very fact, proved that Christ's yoke is easy. It's, it's, it doesn't say life is going to be easy, but it's going to be easy to serve Him. The more you serve Him, the more you're going to be able to cope and deal with the situations of life, okay? Because He hasn't taken Arthur away from me, but I praise His name anyway. I got arthritis that every day I wake up and it's in another joint somewhere. Oh, Pete, man, alive, you know. And, I'm, and, and you know, my, my, my sight's getting a little bit worse all the time. I think that's, is that Sister Judy? And just kidding. All right. <laughs> but that happens. I'm going to praise my Lord anyway. I'm not going to blame him for that. Because guess what? I'm going to have 15, 15. That's even better than 20, 20 up in heaven. <laughs> Amen. They say 15, 15 is like eagle eye. Put the eagle eye on you, yes. You may say, I don't find the yoke of life easy. I don't either. Are the burdens light? I don't either. But remember, Christ does not say that they are what, what he does say, but, but, that they are my, you know, it's going to be easy for me. It's not, he doesn't say that. He didn't say your yoke is easy. There's no words in there like that. It says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. There's never been before such a yoke. Never. Or such a burden. For his love for us. For the delight in which he, he would accomplish. See, his burden was heavy, wasn't it? When he went to that cross. And he says, I took it for you. I took the hard stuff for you, man. And I don't want to make your burden lighter because when you trust in me, you're going to understand through the cross, I want to make it easier for you. Your sins are forgiven, so just serve me. Love me. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Jesus didn't like that. We don't like to go to things that hurt or things that are going to hurt us or anything. No. But he did it. Why? He loved us so much that he took the pain for us. So whenever you have to bear a yoke or a burden, count it easy for the same reason Jesus counted the yoke he carried for us is easy. We bear our burdens for not us. We bear our burdens for his glory. Everything is to glorify our God. People are watching, see how you can handle it, Christian. Because you can't handle it. What hope is Christianity to them? If your character drops out of the bottom in the, in, in the valley, how are you going to point anybody to Jesus Christ? And I'm not saying this easy. I'm not saying we don't have down times. Yes, I do. Yes, we do. But don't stay there. Recognize who you're yoked to and get up and keep going. Give some hope to somebody. We bear our burdens for His glory. And when we do that, then our yoke is easy and our burden is light when we honor our Savior in it. But remember, it must be Christ's yoke that we carry for that alone will help things be easier. But then, what if we rebel against Christ's yoke? Some and perhaps many say, I find it hard to do the Master's will. Do you? I think the hardness Understand me real good here. I think the hardness many times results from not doing the master's will. That's when you get in trouble. You wonder why life is so hard? Because you're not doing the Lord's will somewhere in your life. If you really did it willingly, it would become easier and easier to bear. Because the hardness is in the sin that rebels against Christ. We must let go of ourselves, our wrong desires, and let Christ take control. Then, his yoke will be easy. And his burden will be light. Remember, it is not his yoke if we are burdened with forbidden cares. Because his yoke is that we should be free from the cares because we have cast our cares upon him. Now, rounding third and heading home. Okay, that means we're almost done. <laughs> How 
How about for those who, think of it, think with me right now. How about for those who have been a Christian 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Some of us have been Christians longer than that. What do you say about this this morning, Christians, seasoned Christians? Have you not discovered that somewhat different from, from what they were the first time? In other words, the things that... The, Things you maybe had difficult with before, you don't have any difficult with them anymore. Why? Because the yoke has taught you how to handle them. Amen? Maybe some bad habits you had before, it was hard to get rid of, but now you know, I don't even think about it anymore. It's, it's, a, it's, a mis it's nothing to me anymore. I can walk down that aisle and it ain't going to bother me at all. I can walk out there and it ain't going to bother me. Why? Because you're yoked to the right person. Amen? And if you have, You've given him your storms. Did you not? Amen? You never lost it? Or, 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 but, but since then, you've, you've gone on bearing his cross and learning more. The more you grow in him, the more you read his God-breathed word and let it bless your heart, and, and that, that yoke becomes stronger and stronger and stronger, and pretty soon you can't even get the yoke off because you're glued to his yoke. Amen? How many of us want to work at, wear a yoke on Sunday? And then go out there and just plow them wild fields all and plant that wild stuff all week long and come back and want to put his yoke on there and pray for a crop failure. Because of the bad deeds you do. God says, that's not the way to, that's not my yoke. That's not my yoke. See, I want that yoke to be a permanent fixture on me. You know, I have a, because then, because now that, that you sold out to Jesus, you know which ones I'm talking. They're, they're, they're in here right now. They're all over this church. You have a calmness and a serenity of your spirit, which you did not have right at first. The longer you're with Christ, the stronger you're with Christ, the easier it is to stay under His yoke. You've learned to do almost spontaneously. Think of this now: some things which used to cause us great. Now it's, you don't even think about it anymore. It doesn't tempt you anymore. It has no draw because you know why? He has taken the will and the desire to do it away from you because you've stayed under his yoke. Amen? Hallelujah for that, Christians. You're now instantaneously. And many, and many burdens that almost broke your backs then are no burden at all to you anymore. You've grown and matured into a seasoned yoke fellow with Jesus Christ. Yoke, is there a yoke, a yoke chick? Is it could be a yoke fellowette? Okay, I'm sorry. That's for all of us. Okay. That wasn't a word in my commentary for you chick. Anyway, so, so it should be fellow, chick fellowette. Okay, all right. We have, we'll keep going. We have found that Christ's yoke, haven't we, believers, is easy. And his burden is light. A little poem, just a one-liner. This love that makes our willing feet in swift obedience move. Amen? So, in our ordinary domestic lives, nothing is too heavy anymore. Nothing is too demeaning if it's done for love. And this is the yoke of Christ. When we come to really love Him, we are willing to do or suffer anything for his name's sake. His love makes the burden light and the yoke easy. Jesus can make a dying bed feel like a soft pillow. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5.8, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Revelation 3.20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into them and sup with them and them with me. Romans 10.9-11, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. Wear that yoke proudly with Jesus Christ. Be strong in Jesus Christ, but be humble. Remember, you have to humble yourself to get under it. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever, whosoever in this room this morning, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father God, we come to you this morning.